tracks of a big adult uh, snow leopard. Oh, quite phenomenal. Oh, this is beautiful. And here, just merging with the tracks of a very young one. Dreams. What are dreams? A strongly desired goal or a cherished ambition, Google tells us. The first non-fiction English language book I read was Peter Matheson's Snow Leopard, a physical and spiritual journey on the search for this elusive cat living in the most extreme of environments. I was intrigued and a dream was born. I was trying to fulfill the dream in the very north of India, in Himachal Pradesh, where Tibetan Buddhist culture can flourish freely and snow leopard sightings have become more frequent. So I took a long flight to Chandigarh, where I met Tanzan Doye, a local guide from the small village of Chicham, the final destination. We spent our first night a few hours north of Shimla, the capital of Himachal Pradesh. Here we obtained our inner line permit, which is required because Chicham is close to the Chinese border. Gradually elevation increased as we first followed the Sutli River, before turning northwest to enter Spiti Valley and the identically named Spiti District. Vegetation became more sparse on the way to Tabo, where I spent another night. It was the first really cold one, and starting the car the next morning required heating up the engine with a gas stove. Tabo is home to a famous monastery and above town are the Tabo Caves, which I hiked to in the morning. They were used by monks as dwellings and assembly halls in the past. The Tibetan Buddhist monastery at Tabo was established in 996 and is regarded as one of the most important ones in the Himalayas. It has been visited by the Dalai Lama several times. I was very lucky because the snow festival was taking place on the monastery grounds, starting with the arrival of the assistant district commissioner. Many locals wore their colorful traditional dresses and the women were showcasing some of their religious and household traditions such as praying with prayer wheels, spinning wool, and the lengthy process of producing butter by churning milk. This was followed by traditional dancing and another show of the strong roots of Tibetan Buddhism in the area. Spiti lies in the rain shadow of the Himalayas, close to the Tibetan plateau, and cultural ties with Tibet have always been strong. Historians believe that up to the 10th century, Spiti was part of various Tibetan kingdoms, although in later centuries it was linked to Ladakh and today is an undisputed part of India. After the 
dancing and singing performance of the ladies, the younger generation had a chance, although to recorded music that definitely sounded more contemporary. journey in the afternoon and gained another nearly 1,000 meters on our way to Chicham, passing through some stunning landscapes in the late afternoon sun as we left the clouds in the valley behind. Before reaching our final destination, we crossed Chicham Bridge, which is one of the highest in the world. Chicham is a small village and upon our arrival the lady hosting me at her home was there to say hello. I stayed in a cozy room that even had heating in the evening. The mornings were chilly, in particular for the locals that have to fetch their water from a local stream. The common room where I had my meals was always warm and here Tanzin introduced me to his spotters. More on them later. One evening Tanzin invited me to his home for dinner. I will forever remember his wonderfully welcoming family and the hearty local meal. <laughs> The next morning we started early, heading up into the mountains to, of course, look for snow leopards. I knew that it would be a game of patience, effort and some luck, and much of it would play out at an elevation of between 4,500 and 5,000 meters. As we climbed higher, the weather gradually turned, and by midday it was snowing. Visibility was dropping, eliminating any chance to see wildlife. We had to retreat. The next day the weather was still bad and we therefore decided to drive down to Spiti Valley in order to visit Key Monastery. The weather in the valley was great, allowing for picture-perfect views of the region's largest monastery, which is perched on a hilltop. The Key Monastery had a turbulent history, being damaged and destroyed multiple times over the last few centuries. The inside is richly decorated and outside a group of locals was chanting, as were the monks engulfed in prayers just a few meters away. Nearby we visited some winter wetlands to look for birds. The most numerous ones were red-billed chuffs, which are part of the crow family and have been observed at elevations up to nearly 8,000 meters. On the way back to Chicham, the sunny valley weather held up and we could do some wildlife viewing from the road. A large group of Siberian ibex was on the move. Spiti is at the very southern edge of their distribution. It was
was evident that the deep snow makes grazing and walking more strenuous, especially for the young ones, and the herd was soon enjoying a break on the sunny slopes. Later we found a hill fox in the distance, just before the sun was vanishing behind the mountains, resulting in a beautiful shade projection. When foxes hunt, they rely mainly on their auditory perception, being for example able to hear squeaking mice from up to 100 meters distance. After searching for a while, our fox was successful and found what appeared to be a woolly hare hiding in the snow. The next morning brought beautiful weather. We have been walking up this slope for a while now. The sun hasn't hit us yet, so it's uh, really cold. And of course, it's hard work. Thing, uh, we are approaching the 5,000 meter mark. We are now following the footprints of a snow leopard just here on our right. Pretty fresh. Should be just a couple of hours ago. Close by we met one of our spotters and others could from time to time be seen on mountain ridges in the distance. They are locals who know the terrain inside out and any snow leopard enthusiast is usually supported by two to three spotters, all fully committed and often moving on very steep slopes. An hour later we arrived at an area where snow leopards were known to hunt, and we early on found evidence of blue sheep, its favorite prey, and then the species itself, which was not particularly shy. Suddenly, a bearded vulture appeared in the sky. Maybe there was a kill around with snow leopards on it? We definitely hoped so. There was, but the recent kill had been abandoned a few hours earlier. We were too late. The only animals feeding on the carcass were chuffs. We moved on following the leopard tracks leading away from the carcass. An hour later we reached the rim of the Samba Lambanala Canyon and waited. A spotter who joined us found a golden eagle nest on the opposite side. We are here at a very deep canyon between the two villages of Kibber and Chicha. And our scanner has actually just located a snow leopard, a uh, female. Spotters suddenly seem to appear from all directions and they found her cubs too. Minutes later I also spotted the snow leopards in what seemed to be an impossible to reach area in the rock wall. Without the spotters I would have never detected them. They were resting more than 300 meters away on the other side of the canyon only modern camera technology with a long-range zoom made it possible to observe them. The two cubs moved to a different spot a bit later where they slept for a few more hours. In the afternoon, the mother started to move, frequently rolling in the dirt and then greeting her cubs, resting and socializing with them for a while before moving on. Snow leopards separated from the big cat lineage 3.2 million years ago and have adapted to become the highest living predator. Their camouflage is as good as it gets and they blend in perfectly in the rocky terrain.
The mother and her two cubs continued to move along the canyon before they disappeared, just when the sun dipped below the mountains. Fantastic snow leopard sighting today, but now we are hurrying down. It's bitterly cold and whole day we were exposed to freezing winds. So we want to get down before it's uh, totally dark. Back in Chicham, people were in a festive mood. The locals were celebrating Dachang. It typically lasts for a couple of days and this evening it started with chanting, followed by the shooting of arrows to symbolize victory over evil. The next day we returned to the canyon. The word of the sighting had traveled fast and another two dozen people joined over the course of the morning. The snow leopards were back, first resting together, but after a while the two cubs went to explore on their own. At some stage they suddenly became very alert. A blue sheep had found its way into the rocks and was just standing a few meters away, probably frozen in shock due to its mistake. But it was its lucky day. Although the cubs were probably approaching one year of age, they still did not know how to hunt. The blue sheep turned around and got away. Later, the previous day's scenario unfolded again. The mother started to move in the afternoon and the cubs greeted her. They were in a playful mood and enjoyed each other's company. When they followed the mother into what looked like ever steepening rock walls, the focus started to be less on play but on the next step ahead. On these steep slopes they benefit from their huge paws which have fur on the bottom that protects and cushions their feet for walking, climbing and jumping. rays of the sun they arrived on the canyon rim and for the cubs it was again time for play while slowly following the mother. the day before, likely to hunt or to feed off the previous kill. Snow leopards typically hunt large animals every 8 to 15 days, being capable of killing prey two to three times their own weight. Afterwards they may take three to four days to eat it. Cloudy skies again, 
but it did not deter us from heading out. We first ran into a fox at close distance, before the spotters found the snow leopard in a different part of the canyon, this time a bit closer. Snow was starting to fall, and combined with the wind, it made for some very chilly wildlife watching. This time, mother and cubs were resting some distance away from each other. After sleeping for a short while, she soon started to move, being very much aware of my presence and often looking at me. Snow leopards live solitary, and adults only meet for mating. They advertise their presence by leaving distinct signals along their travel routes, scent marking by rubbing their cheeks on rocks and spraying urine. These smell signals are their major form of communication and mark off ranges, and different animals often use the same rocks. She carefully inspected the area many times, possibly looking for the snow leopard that earlier had left smell markings and who could be a danger for her cubs. Males are known to kill cubs to bring the female back into heat. Moving away from the cubs, she was likely going for a hunt. A single adult snow leopard will need to eat 20 to 30 blue sheep equivalents a year but usually only one in 10 hunts is successful, providing an idea of how difficult the life of a snow leopard is, despite being the apex predator here. Meanwhile, the two cubs were on the move too, slowly trying to plot their own route through the steep terrain. They were clearly learning how to become independent snow leopards, although it was not an easy task, frequently requiring backtracking and down climbing. After a while, the weather came down on us. Tanzan and I had tried to find a good spot to watch the mother's possible hunting activity, but visibility dropped fast, forcing us to retreat. We hiked six days for snow leopard and uh, three days we seeing uh, snow leopard, so we are happy. Uh, now we are going down and uh, drive out. On the long drive back, we made a final stop at the Danka Monastery, one of the oldest in Spiti Valley. It was originally built as a fort monastery, and at the top sits the former palace of the Nomos, the rulers of Spiti until the British replaced them. My dream to see the snow leopard had been accomplished. I was lucky, as only an estimated three to six thousand remain today. Nobody knows the exact number. The Snow Leopard Trust is doing a wonderful job to protect them from poaching and human wildlife conflict, but climate change is hitting the snow leopards as well as the villagers at high elevation much faster than anywhere else, and they all face an uncertain future.